All right. So this is just to uh, prove a point to you guys. And I would ask, what is the most unclean material you can imagine putting your hand in? Uh, some people might say dirt, um, that you wouldn't want to either put your hand or say a newborn baby into a pile of dirt because of the risk of infection. Uh, some pe other people might say, oh no, vomit is even worse. If you put yourself uh, 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 in, in vomit, you, you're likely to get infected. Or what about fresh manure? Of course, that is just really nasty and vile and filled with potential disease causing uh, compounds. Well, what if we took a mixture of all three of those things and instead of putting either our uh, part of our body or uh, say the, uh, 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 a newborn in that material, we instead put bean into a combination of all that material. What happens? Well, what we see is that the bean will grow or the plant seed will grow into a pristine plant. And I like to do this to make it clear to people that beans are some of the most powerful anti-disease uh, compounds that humans can consume. So you put a bean into a combination of dirt, manure, and other materials, and what do you get? You get a beautiful, healthy plant. And uh, beans have some of the most potent anti-tumor, anti-disease properties of anything you can eat. And we should be eating beans on a regular basis. I'm, I, I know that I'm running, I'm almost out of time here. I think I have maybe about five or 10 minutes left. Um, where we are in this lecture is there are two nutritionfacts.org videos on beans and phytates and how phytates prevent cancer. Uh, I'm gonna skip over those um, in the interest of time. And so I can um, move to uh, my uh, few of my remaining slides that I think contain uh, a lot of good and important information. However, I would strongly encourage um, the people listening to this lecture to watch the nutritionfacts.org lecture on beans and phytates and on how phytates help to prevent cancer. Dr. Mills, thank you so much. And, and the last, I mean, we would love to have you for so many more hours, but I would say we are up against the clock. If we could wrap up within about two or three minutes, that would be ideal. Okay. All right. Uh, this just shows the effect of fruits and vegetables on the human immune response. Again, um, uh, those uh, individuals eating um, uh, more fruits and vegetables have a more sustained immune response. When you look at the production of IgG, which is a type of antibody uh, to the pneumovax uh, uh, vaccine. So again, in order for cancer to grow, it has to evade detection by our immune system. Immune system effectiveness decreases with age, but pet based diets can uh, 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 help uh, force with all that. Um, our first line defense against cancers and virus infected cells are natural killer cells, which are increased by um, plant-based diets. They recognize, destroy these cells without being primed. Berries, other fruits and vegetables boost natural killer, both number and activity. Cruciferous family vegetables and other plants also increase the ability of lymphocytes to produce antibodies, mushrooms, uh, increase IgA, uh, which is a type of antibody production that is found in our secretions, such as um, saliva, tears, uh, mucus, and can help prevent um, uh, infectious organisms from gaining access to the body at all. Um, and so mushrooms can increase IgA production by more than 50% for two weeks after uh, only one meal. Uh, and that's what this uh, shows, that just one meal of uh, mushrooms increases IgA production. And uh, garlic increases natural killer function, alters gene expression um, in a beneficial fashion and improves anti-cancer immunity. Spices like cardamom, turmeric, black pepper, 
and others also increase natural killer cell activity and the effectiveness of other immune cells and intraepithelial lymphocytes are stimulated and programmed via the um, uh, AR receptor, which is upregulated by cruciferous vegetables. Um, all right. I am going to skip uh, this next section is on how uh, plant-based diets increase immune function. Um, I'll make sure you guys have a copy of these uh, slides so that you can include that. This um, two, these two slides uh, talk about the uh, antioxidant um, uh, compounds found in plant foods. I'm gonna skip here to the end to uh, give you uh, the two remaining individuals I wanna highlight and then we'll bring this to an end. Um, so uh, Emmanuel uh, Bazarkis is a, a, a Greek young man who um, competed in the 400, uh, 100, 200 meter events um, and was training for the Olympics in 2004. He uh, was eating a lot of meat because he thought that's what he had to do. Um, and he then um, developed stage two colon, was diagnosed with stage two colon cancer in uh, 2014. Cut to the chase. He refused to do surgery, chemo, or any other uh, therapy and converted to a raw plant-based diet. And over the next uh, uh, eight to seven months, he, uh, his cancer has completely regressed. Um, and all his follow-up scans showed that the colon cancer uh, had disappeared. And um, he is um, more than six years, now seven years, uh, cancer-free. And then the last person is Mr. Frank Smith. Frank um, was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer in uh, 2013. He was told by the uh, doctors over at uh, Georgetown uh, Lombardi Cancer Center, he had less than six months to live. Uh, he should make his end of life plans. Uh, neither surgery, chemo, or radiation uh, is useful for uh, uh, liver cancer. Again, he went to see a plant-based doctor in Washington, D.C., became completely vegan. For the first six to seven months, he was raw. Over that time, the liver cancer completely regressed. Follow-up scans showed that it was gone. He then actually took uh, a medication called Harvoni to cure his hepatitis C, but this is the truly amazing thing. After the hep C was cured, even though he had cirrhosis, which was scarring of the liver and felt to be irreversible, remaining on his plant-based diets helped to completely reverse the cirrhosis as well. So, um, we cannot count on the government or agribusiness to uh, do the right thing for us. So again, I'm going to skip to my summation here. So burning down the house or putting out the flames. The cancer diagnosis, of course, can be one of those terrifying and mysterious uh, events we can confront in life. And the first thing that we often think is how did this happen to me? From this lecture, I hope you've seen that many of the dietary and lifestyle factors that we have in Western countries uh, increase our risk for developing cancer and increase the likelihood that if we don't change our diet, once the cancer develops, it will spread and resist treatment uh, or recur and eventually take our life. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, um, uh, are we going to call our doctors to try and put out the cancer fire while we're still actively throwing gasoline on the inferno by continuing to consume animal flesh and dairy products? Because if we do that, we're probably going to die. Um, and sadly, that is what happens in most conventional approaches to cancer treatment. But the good news from this lecture is that there, um, there are several individuals who showed that you can cure and reverse this disease by changing your diet. And, um, and by uh, adopting a strictly plant-based diet and a combination uh, or a combination of a plant-based diet with conventional treatment. Can I guarantee that adopting a plant-based diet will cure every patient? Of course I can't, but neither does conventional treatment. However, it is definitely worth giving plant-based diets a try because there is no piece of chicken, steak, or cheese that is worth your life. We have seen that there are dietary factors that cause, promote, and drive cancers, but that there are also dietary factors that suppress and can cure cancer. If we eliminate the animal products which create and exacerbate these diseases and embrace a healthy plant-based diet, we may be able to avoid cancer altogether or reverse this disease once it develops. And with that, I will end this lecture and thank you for your time and attention.